Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. Before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. In this video, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of space. Jupiter is a coffee and cream covered swirl of secrets. Beneath its undulating cloud bands are stories we're only beginning to understand. Images of Jupiter, taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in the Gemini Observatory, reveals details about the giant planet's stormy atmosphere. We typically see images of Jupiter in visible light that gives it a swirly beige, orangish red appearance. But when telescopes look at the gas giant in other wavelengths of light, different features pop out. The Gemini North Telescope in Hawaii teamed up with NASA and ESA's Hubble Space Telescope to view Jupiter at the same time. Gemini North picked up an infrared image while Hubble handled visible light and ultraviolet light. Seen together, the three views show off many moods of stormy Jupiter. The telescopes snapped the images on January the 11th, 2017, and a National Science Foundation Noir Lab Astronomy Research Center released the trio of views on Tuesday. Three years of imaging observations using the International Gemini Observatory, a program of NSF's Noir Lab, have probed deep into Jupiter's cloud tops. The ultra-sharp Gemini infrared images complement optical and ultraviolet observations by Hubble and radio observations by the Juno spacecraft to reveal new secrets about the giant planet. The Gemini data was critical because it allowed us to probe deeply into Jupiter's clouds on a regular schedule, said Michael Wong of UC Berkeley, who led the research team. We used a very powerful technique called lucky imaging, adds Wong. With lucky imaging, a large number of very short exposure images are obtained and only the sharpest images, when the Earth's atmosphere is briefly stable, are used. The result in this case is some of the sharpest infrared images of Jupiter ever obtained from the ground. According to Wong, these images rival the views from space. Gemini's North Near Infrared Imager also allows astronomers to peer deep into Jupiter's mighty storms, since the longer wavelength infrared light can pass through the thin haze, but is obscured by thicker clouds high in Jupiter's atmosphere. This creates a jack-o'-lantern-like effect in the images, where the warm, deep layers of Jupiter's atmosphere glow through the gaps in the planet's thick cloud cover. The detailed multi-wavelength imaging of Jupiter by Gemini and Hubble has, over the past three years, proven crucial to contextualizing the observations by the Juno orbiter and to understand Jupiter's wind patterns, atmospheric waves, and cyclones. The two telescopes, together with Juno, can observe Jupiter's atmosphere as a system of winds, gases, heat, and weather phenomena, providing coverage and insight, much like the network of weather satellites meteorologists use to observe Earth. On each of its close passes over Jupiter's clouds, Juno detected radio signals created by powerful lightning flashes called spherics, short for atmospherics. The whistlers, so-called because the whistle-like tone they cause on radio receivers. Whenever possible, Gemini and Hubble focused on Jupiter and obtained high-resolution, wide-area maps of the giant planet to augment the Juno observations. Juno's instruments could determine the latitude and longitudinal coordinates of clusters of spheric and whistler signals. With Gemini and Hubble images at multiple wavelengths, researchers can now probe the cloud structure at these locations. By combining these three pieces of information, the research team found that the lightning strikes and some of the largest storm systems that create them are formed in and around large convective cells over deep clouds of water ice and liquid. These three portraits highlight the key advantage of multi-wavelength astronomy. Viewing planets and other astronomical objects at different wavelengths of light allows scientists to glean otherwise unavailable insights, said Noir Lab. 
pointing out that the planet's famous great red spot storm system is prominent in visible and ultraviolet light, but nearly disappears when seen in infrared. Scientists track lightning because it is a marker of convection, the turbulent mixing process that transports Jupiter's internal heat up to the visible cloud tops, explained Wong. The largest concentration of lightning seen by Juno came from a swirling storm called a filamentary cyclone. Imaging from Gemini and Hubble shows details in the cyclone, revealing it to be a twisted collection of tall convective clouds with deep gaps offering glimpses to the water clouds far below. Ongoing studies of lightning sources will help us understand how convection on Jupiter is different from or similar to the convection in Earth's atmosphere, Wong commented. While scanning the gas giant for gaps in cloud cover, Gemini spotted a telltale glow in the great red spot, indicating a clear view down deep, warmer atmospheric layers. Similar features have been seen in the Great Red Spot before, said team member Glenn Orton of JPL, but visible light observation couldn't distinguish between darker cloud material and thinner cloud cover over Jupiter's warm interior, so their nature remained a mystery. Now with the data from Gemini, this mystery is solved, where visible light imaging from Hubble show a dark semicircle in the Great Red Spot. Images taken from the Gemini using infrared light reveal a bright arc lighting up the region. This infrared glow from Jupiter's internal heat would have been blocked by thicker clouds but can pass through Jupiter's hazy atmosphere unobscured. By seeing these features as bright infrared hotspots, Gemini confirms that they are gaps in the clouds. The planet's great red spot is almost invisible at infrared wavelengths. Jupiter's counter-rotating bands of clouds, on the contrary, are clearly visible in all three views. Observing the great red spot at multiple wavelengths yields other surprises. The dark region in the infrared image is larger than the corresponding red oval in the visible image. This discrepancy arises because different structures are revealed by different wavelengths. The infrared observations show areas covered with thick clouds, while the visible and ultraviolet observations show the locations of chromophores, the particles that give the great red spot its distinctive hue by absorbing blue and ultraviolet light. The Great Red Spot isn't the only storm system visible in these images. The region, sometimes nicknamed Red Spot Junior, known to Jovian scientists as Oval BA, appears in both the visible and ultraviolet observations. With this, we have come to the end of our video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.